So today we are going to discuss about Fisher Advanced Cut and Wall System, or uh, generally the facade supporting structures, which we call it ACT. And the main topic today is what is unshown in stone fixing. Uh, so let's go deep into this uh, presentation. Uh, before going to the main presentation, I would like to tell you about uh, the time split. The total duration of the webinar will be 45 minutes. That is uh, 3.30 from, uh, from 3.30 to 4.15 p.m. And question and answers will be for 10 minutes. And there will be a polls and feedback session at end of the presentation for five minutes. Even on the poll slide, you will see some of the polls. And uh, if you get time during the webinar session, during the seminar session, you can uh, go for the polls as well. And for better experience, uh, use only Google, Google Chrome or Firefox. And please try to uh, you avoid using Internet Explorer because uh, earlier we have faced a couple of uh, issues, streaming uh, issues. Please do not do any parallel downloads. Uh, it might obstruct your uh, streaming quality. Uh, sometimes buffering of video may occur. And all the question and answers will be answered at end of the session. And hope everybody is having the same screen, uh, which is there on the slide. So you can um, uh, pop up your screen so that you can see a bigger presentation and uh, streaming quality will be good. And if you have any audio issues or uh, voice is not clear or the video, some streaming issues are there, you can put it in a chat uh, option, which was highlighted on the screen. And if you have any questions during the presentation or related to any product or related to any support, you can keep your questions in the questions tab. And the poll session, there will be certain polls which uh, will be initiated from our side. So kindly go for the poll and give your valuable uh, uh, options in the poll. So before going to the main topic, so a brief introduction about me. I have uh, three years experience in structural steel and uh, pre-engineered buildings and two years experience in uh, fixings. And I did my master's in structural engineering. So this is the overall uh, brief introduction about me. And as a uh, Fisher uh, team, I'm working for Oman as a technical field engineer. So here is the overview of Fisher cladding supports or uh, Fisher facade system, I can say, or Fisher advanced curtain technology, which is Fisher ACT. Majorly, we have two different segments. One is spin system, another one is undercut system. The spin system is quite new to the GCC market and undercut system, which is a very regular one, which uh, most of you had seen in uh, many of the projects. It, we, had, we are well known for our uh, undercut system. So as a part one of the online seminar session, we are going to discuss about pin system. And there will be a part two uh, seminar session, same like how we are doing now for the undercut system in the near future. So before going to the uh, stone fixing, or we are going to discuss about what kind of supports or what kind of framing arrangement or clamp arrangement or uh, some other, etc. Uh, we are going to discuss, we will see what are the major load uh, that are going to affect the stone cladding or the fixing of a stone. So let's speak about the major loads uh, when it comes. The first one is the gravity or the dead load, which is nothing but the self weight of the stone. So how it is going to affect the uh, supporting structure. So the stone will try to drop off from the uh, fixing location. So we need to counteract that using some uh, supports. And the second one is the wind load which changes uh, its air pressure all around the building. So location to location or based on the boundary conditions and periphery uh, obstructions, the pressure may vary. So what, how the wind is going to affect the facade or the stone. So it will uh, try to give a pull or a push to the stone and it will try to pull off the stone from the building or uh, pull off the panel from the building. So we need to, give a supporting structure uh, with a valid justification. And the third one is earthquake load. So the earthquake load is there will be a ground motion, uh, both lateral and longitudinal direction. So it creates a minor vibration on the main structure and try to shake it in uh, either direction. And it will uh, pull out the stone unit from the building. And the fourth one is temperature. So temperature uh, is the major uh, one which which uh, most of us had seen uh, temperature is going to create uh, a major impact uh, when we had uh, not provided a proper provision. 
so what exactly the temperature is going to uh, affect on the stone it causes a dimensional change like compression uh, uh, sorry like uh, expansion and contraction so this expansion and contraction if we are not going to give a provision for the stone to expand and contract properly so ultimately there will be a chances that there will be localized pressures or internal stresses will develop and uh, which leads to crack in the stone or a sudden failure in the stone so the edge where we are fixing the pins or the clamps it will just break out and uh, stone may fall off so which is a very uh, critical part especially in the gcc region why because we have uh, higher temperatures and not but not least the fifth one impact loads so these are not the major loads but still in some exceptional cases we need to consider so this is the contact between the stone and to the people uh, where you have uh, rush areas like shopping malls or uh, parking lobbies where there is a vehicle uh, the vehicle may hit or some uh, vehicles may hit this uh, facade uh, locations so these things we need to concentrate so out of all these five major loads the main which we are going to discuss is the gravity loads wind loads and the temperature loads so earthquake uh, we can omit in this case which is not a predominant one or a major uh, load which is not going to create an impact on the facade system or the stone cladding system why because the impact due to the wind itself is quite high compared to the earthquake so if the design criteria or uh selecting a product based on the stresses developed by wind if it satisfies both the dead load and the wind load automatically it will satisfy the earthquake uh, impact or the earthquake the load generates through earthquake so regarding the temperature uh, we will discuss in the upcoming slides how we are going to solve this uh, what, what impact it is going to create on the stone and what kind of uh, prob what kind of uh, product we have to solve these uh, problems so this is an overview of uh, the loads and their impact on the stone cladding so here we uh, discuss about our uh, fisher pin system uh, which is uh, new to the gcc market and uh, there were in each each pin uh, system or the each clamp system had certain uh, number of uh, accessories or certain number of uh, elements which which assembles together to form a load bearing or load transferring unit from the stone to the sub uh, from the stones to the uh, main substrate like rcc or uh, block wall so let's discuss each and every individual element so here is the you can see on the screen here is the main body which is the main load barrier which comes with a vertical slot so for all the vertical adjustment uh, before going to this i will just like to highlight uh, two points whenever we are speaking about the facade or uh, some stone panel or any other panel fixing always we need to have a flexibility in adjustment because this is a secondary element and this majority of the stones if you see they are naturally available we always had some tolerance uh in terms of thickness or in terms of fixing or in terms of so every every uh, location you need to have a adjustable uh, flexible uh, system where you can adjust according to the uh, tolerances so when we speak about the stone we need to have a vertical adjustment as well as an adjustment in front and back position or you can say lateral and longitudinal position so how we are going to achieve with this clamp so the main body itself it comes with a vertical adjustment or a vertical slot which is had a tendency to adjust the clamp up and down or uh, top and bottom in a vertical direction so generally this clamp comes in uh, stainless steel uh, which is quite because majority of the facades we will see in the external area of the building so corrosion is the major impact since our region is completely across the coastal belt so which is nothing but ss304 and 316 you'll get in both the materials so let's talk about uh, uh part or uh, the element number 2 which is a steel bush or a steel cylindrical uh, one which had an internal threads so which will uh, it, it's it acts like a guide for the flat head element uh, which is highlighted uh, over here in the number 3 uh, you can say so which is uh, an easy adjustment for front and back which is acts as a guide uh, with internal threads 
This also comes both in uh, A2 and A4 uh, materials, same as I explained to you before for the corrosion resistance. And the third element is uh, drive pin or the vertical pin, which is the second, uh, which is the first contact with the stone. This is the element which takes complete load, either it is gravity load or it is uh, wind load uh, or it is earthquake, all the horizontal loads. It, the drive pin will uh, take all the horizontal loads which will transfer it to the main clamp and from the main clamp it transfer to the substrate and here is the coolest uh, or the nicest uh, feature i can say the plastic sleeve so generally uh, i had a question to all of you so whenever we had seen uh, the stone uh, clamp fixings in rcc or in any substrate our regular practice is we will drill uh, a hole in the stone basically say if your uh, pin is uh, approximately say 5 mm or 6 mm we will be drilling a hole around 8 to 9 mm and uh, later on once the uh, stone fixing and everything is done we will be filling with a uh, cementitious grout or some non shing grout correct uh, can you say yes or no for this Uh, yes, Mr. Peer Mohammed. Yes, yes. And Freddie, yes, you have answered yes. And Mr. Danny, no. Yes, sometimes. Yes, yes, that's a nice uh, answer, Mr. Danny. Yes. Uh, yes, see, uh, we, if you speak technically, we should uh, not fill this gap. Uh, the extra hole or the, the provision which we had given for the pin uh, fixing, we should not fill this with any cementitious grout, especially in the external areas where it was even in the internal areas as well. So what happens when you fill with the grout or a cementitious or a non shrink uh, grout over a period of time due to the variations in temperature, which we speak about uh, in the earlier slides, that uh, we, are, we are obstructing or we are restricting the stone to expand in any direction so the cementitious grout will be very uh, strong like strong and it will not allow the stone to expand so what happens that it is like you are compacting it you are holding it very tight so ultimately because of this expansion which we are not allowing the stone to do so it will develop an internal stresses and uh, it will start either the edge will break out or the complete stone it may crack and it will uh, fall down sometimes so this is a major, very major uh, impact uh, on our complete system. So all, all our clam, stone, everything was properly tested and uh, went, but ul ultimately the filling material is going to matter. So in order to avoid that, we, ca we came up with a very nice uh, solution. Like there will be a plastic sleeve, which this plastics, and you don't need to fill any cementitious material or any grout inside this. So this itself will expand based on the, temperature variations or contract and it will give the stone a flexibility to move uh, based on based on this uh, temperature variations uh, this is one uh, major breakthrough and here we talk about the next element the flat head bolt so this flat head bolt is the main load carrier for the vertical loads especially the dead load which transfers the complete loads directly to the main clamp and main clamp transfers to the substrate yeah this is the overall uh, features of uh, overall features and the overall element assembly of the uh, clamp and here are the few specifications the clamp most of the all the accessories comes both in uh, ss304 and ss316 which is a2 and a4 materials and the maximum stone thickness you can fit you can uh, fix with this is from 20 mm to 50 mm you can fix with this clamp and the maximum offset from 40 mm a minimum of 40 mm which is not including the stone it is excluding the stone thickness from 40 mm to 180 mm uh, you can uh, use these clamps and the load capacity each uh, clamp can uh, adequately uh, carry this is a factored load i can say it is up to 150 kg or 1.5 kN, it's it can carry so here you can see a detailed uh, image of how this uh, fixation is there for the concrete a diagrammatic representation is there and uh, you can see the 3d clamp 
how exactly it looked like. Yeah. So here uh, we finished our uh, the basic features of the clamp and uh, the loads part. What kind of the loads and how much importance we need to give for the loads. And here are the few application references uh, or the application images which you can see how uh, the work is carried out using this clamp. So today we are going to discuss uh, about one case study uh, related to say many many of the locations we had seen uh, either it can be the stone fixing will be on the periphery generally for the concrete structures or for the hollow blocks, maybe solid blocks. Uh, did anyone come across uh, a non uh, a non uh, solid substrate like uh, steel structure or some kind of uh, truss or some kind of uh, steel framing, uh, something like a very heavy framing? Uh, can someone answer for this? So have you ever uh, seen uh, a stone fixing, how how we can uh, clad one area where you have a non-structural uh, substrate like steel frames or some uh, steel I-beams? Yeah, let's move on. I'll uh, show you one case study which we have done uh, recently. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Rabino. Uh, so here is uh, one of the challenging uh, tasks which we have come across recently, which are the challenging area. It is one of the reputed uh, project and one of the royal project in Oman. And this is the area uh, we need to do the complete uh, stone cladding, which I have highlighted over here with the red lines you can see on my screen. So this is complete uh, a structural steel area. And this complete area has to be cladded with stone. So here come up. Uh, here is the special uh, thing I can say from Fisher. Uh, we take each and every job as a challenge, and we will try to find the best uh, solution for the market. So here we will show you. So these are the other uh, pictures from the different angle or different view you can see. So the total height of this application or the I beam, uh, which you can see on my screen. So this complete column height is around 14 meters height and the complete width of this area is around uh, 30 meters. So approximately the square meter area is around 600 to 700 square meters. So here is our design approach. Uh, here on the left side, you can see uh, the complete uh, structure, how we have uh, gave the structural framing in order to support the stone cladding. So we have taken uh, supports from the eye sections and if you see i made it three different segments and uh, with a uh, more clarity in the images if you go to the first segment uh, here you can see we have two i beams and uh, using the two i beams we have taken some uh, lateral channels and uh, we have cladded we have given some vertical support so this vertical support is going to uh, clad uh, going to support the stone completely and here uh, you can see this uh, second segment here it is quite different because on the top we have two i sections but on the bottom we have completely tube sections so now let's go to the previous slide and see exactly now uh, let's take a close look see on the top you have a flat i beam and in between you have some tubular sections am i right yeah so and again, on the bottom, you have some uh, two more eye sections over here. So this is uh, in in uh, in an interval of uh, every three meter, we have three to three point five meter. We have uh, the structural steel uh, members to take the support. And this is the picture after uh, application. So this is how we have uh, cladded the complete area. Uh, we had uh, given the complete supporting structure in order to uh, support the stone. And here the stone, uh, if you speak about the stone size, we have around uh, 1.2 meter by 0.6 meter, say 1200 mm by 600 mm stone, which is of 30 mm thickness. And 
we had uh, confident I, it's quite confident i can say uh, the channel we have used is a 40 by 40 mm channel uh, 40 mm in height and 40 mm in uh, width and the channel thickness is hardly 2, two mm in uh, maximum channel thickness we have used so here is the another uh, application picture so there are uh, i mean uh, these are different uh, applications which we had seen in the case study is related to complete a non uh, solid uh, substrate uh, like uh, it's neither concrete nor block walls or hollow blocks and here you can see a different kind of uh, application for especially for the solid uh, areas so generally we might have seen using the clamps but here we come up with one more uh, new application where you have uh, bigger offset say for example with the clamps we had gone up to uh, say 100 to 180 mm or uh, maximum you can say 200 not more than that so when you have a bigger offset or when you have a more flexibility like you need to you, you, you don't want to drill in so many uh, like if you have a complete shear wall or some uh, major structural element which is going to carry the building loads and if uh, the project requirement or the project specification speaks like uh, the consultant will not allow us to drill it to the so many uh, locations in the concrete which may damage the structural stability of the main structure so it may uh, it may disturb the purpose or it may uh, spoil the intent what it was uh, designed for so in those locations we will be uh, we can do this way we will take the channel uh, railings uh, as and your uh, drilling the number of drillings can be uh, reduced and uh, we can uh, go for the cladding application here is a typical uh, application reference and i'll show you a few more application pictures here so here you can see how the complete structural work has carried out and how the here in this uh, pictures you can see how the vertical rail and the horizontal rails are fixed together and how the stone is going to be fixed on the horizontal rail here is one more application picture uh, in the right hand top picture you can see uh, how the maximum offset has achieved uh, using the channel system which is quite uh, challenging thing when you use clamps maybe sometimes it is not possible as well uh, the major offsets or the greater offsets uh, this is uh, one more application using the same uh, kind of railing system uh, here you can see this is completely away from the main uh, substrate or the block wall or the rcc so it is complete the cladding is completely across the uh, structural steel members or the tube members which you can see and here you can see on the left side top the structural element how the steel is fabricated and erected it is like in an arch shape and uh, in the below image you can see how beautifully it was cladded this is completely the complete support and uh, the complete uh, material or the clamps which was supplied by the fissure and uh, for especially the it is it is not about uh, designing and uh, supplying the material to the contractor or the client because these kind of the most challenging part in these kind of applications is your support so the designer or the guy who is proposing it, he might have a different uh, intent in mind and his way of fixing the stone it might be different so from fisher it is not about just giving the material and supplying uh, to the contractor we will be coming on site and we will demonstrate how to install this stone how to handle this product so uh, until until your project finishes we will be coming and we will be assisting you on site continuously so this is how uh, we win the customer trust and here is uh, one more application picture uh, which you can see so so this is also the same uh, it had a greater offset we have used the same uh, railing system where you can uh, even reduce your number of drill holes so here we come up to the end of the presentations. Uh, so if you have any uh, queries, uh, I'll answer you. Kindly post your all uh, questions in uh, questions tab. So let's move on to the questions. Mr. Andre 
Raji is asking, can you be so kind to send me the presentation used after the webinar via email? Yes, uh, Mr. Andrew, we will be sending you the presentation after the webinar. And Ruben, uh, are there special requirements for the blast loads within your fixing systems? Uh, Mr. Ruben, uh, yes, we can consider the blast loads as well, uh, but uh, ultimately it depends on the design, like how how much uh, impact or how much loads that uh, it was designed for. Yes, we can consider, but there is a limitation. Generally, blast loads will be quite uh, high in uh, magnitude, or uh, which is a special case. Yes, we can uh, still uh, we can give a try to this, and we can look into this. If you have some requirement, uh, please drop an email to us. Uh, end of this presentation, I'll be giving you the. Uh, you can contact our team, or I'll be giving you the email. I'll contact you personally. And Sinli do. Is the capacity 1.5 kN for both vertical and horizontal loadings? Yes, uh, this is the least one I had given. This is for the vertical and horizontal load. You will be getting much more. So horizontal load, even it is much more. I can say approximately if you have a wind pressure uh, around 1.5 kN per square meter, uh, it's going to satisfy well, even more than that. And again, one more question from Selindo. I would have thought that for this system stone hole should be perfectly done by an experienced worker to avoid the large holes and the pin grout or the plastic should should not be needed please shed light on this need yeah uh, mr selindo the problem is if you have drilled exactly to the dia of the pin see, still there, since it is uh, there won't be any uh, barrier between your pin and the hole uh, outer uh, outer face so still there will be a friction which can induce uh, some uh, inbuilt forces and you are uh, we are not going to allow the stone we are giving the least provision to the stone to expand in uh, its direction so uh, you we have to give a provision for the stone to expand so the plastic sleeve is must i can say or some uh, you need to fill a material which should have some moment compatibility but it should not be a strict or a solid uh, cementitious grout. Mr. Han, so Mr. Han is asking, what is the maximum load capacity of the fin system to carry the stone? So approximately, I had uh, given a reference from 20 mm to 50 mm stone. Approximately, you can say uh, each clamp, the dead load, if you talk about the dead load, wind load, it varies. Wind and seismic, it varies, depends on the parameters. So you can go up to 150 kg per the clamp. And which is the factor load. Generally, the factor comes almost 40% than the actual load. Again, a question from Mr. Silindo. Do you clarify the companies or the personals qualified to use your product or the system? Being experienced, trained to use the product, to me, is must. I have been seen due to the workability issues. Uh, yes, Mr. Silindo, uh, coming to this, uh, we can recommend uh, the persons or the company names which we had uh, positive feedback when we were working with, but uh, we cannot take any assurance or we cannot uh, give a, what you say, uh, a certification that they have uh, done it. This company is in, con in uh, tie up with Fisher or in uh, contract with Fisher. But uh, still, whatever the product we were supplying to any project, irrespective of uh, this, we can give the training personally. And for uh, each and every individual on the site, we can do a mock-up, uh, like how to handle this product or how to uh, install this uh, and how the drilling, whether the drilling proper is not. So these things we can assist on the site. And Mr. Ramar. Uh, when we come to your question, how can we go for maintenance or replacement of the single stone? Uh, I think uh, if I see your question specific, like say, for example, if there is a problem in uh, one stone between, uh, say you have a couple of area and at some location where you cannot replace one single panel, actually you need to take the complete series of panels, at least uh, uh, from the top and you need to replace the center panel so there is no other way for this especially in the pin system and mr danny 
which item you used between channel and stone uh, actually it is same similar like our uh, flat head bolt which i explained you the element number three so the channel will be directly connected to the substrate using an anchor and the channel will have a inbuilt serration so we have a customized bolt for that to hold it in the serration and uh, you will be fixing the flat head bolt how we fix it to the normal clamps we can share you that detail and mr silindo i think the material fails first for the blast on the blast before the anchors uh yes yes you are right so the stone itself might failure first because uh, the anchor part or the clamps are quite uh, stronger when it compared to the stone itself yes i agree with you and mr danny sorry i attended late will be how yeah sure we will uh, we will send you an invitation and uh, for the undercut system as well